Good morning, welcome to City Life Church Online. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to worship with you today. If this is your first time with us, we would love to know. We have a super quick connect card for you to fill out. So if you're joining us on Facebook Live, you'll see a description tab at the top right corner of your screen. Click the link that says see more and in that section, a link for our connect card will pop open. If you're joining us from Church Online, you'll see a banner on your screen right now. And if you click that, it will open up a connect card as well. However you joined us today, would you please mind taking taking a quick second and filling that out. We would love to connect with you and thank you personally for visiting us today here at City Life Church Online. Here's a couple quick tips for navigating your experience. As I just mentioned, if you're joining us by Facebook, at your top right corner of the screen, there's a description tab. If you open that, you'll find links to your online giving, City Life Kids online experience, all of our social media platforms, as well as a link to download our City Life app. If you're joining us through Church Online, all of these items I just mentioned can be found by clicking the notes tab to the right hand of your screen. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. And if you consider City Life Church your home, I wanna recommend that you download the app. It's going to give you access to all sorts of content and updates about what's going on here at City Life Church. You're also going to see multiple banners or links popping up on your screen throughout today. Make sure to keep an eye out for those. Please feel free to let us know how God is moving in your life. And if you need prayer for anything, we have a team waiting to hear your requests and stand in faith, believing that God is going to move mountains in your life. Thank you again for joining us here at City Life Church Online. We're excited to worship with you today. Let's head to the auditorium. Hey City Life, thank you so much for joining us today. We ask you that you join us in worship, whatever you want right now. Come on, let's worship Jesus today.
and I dare you just to raise a hallelujah right there in the middle of your living room right now. We shout hallelujah. We bless your name this morning, God. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break. At your name, still call the sea to still. Rage in me to steal every way. At your name, say Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence me. We say Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. to see once again.
You cause the walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles in this moment. In this moment, God. In this moment, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare peace. We declare wholeness. We declare that mountains are being moved. Mountains. Come on, say that. You call. impossible for you, nothing too difficult for you. Oh, we're standing here in this moment, Lord, to give you praise. You made a way for us, Lord. 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 You made Jesus' name, with your power, come and do it again, Lord. There's nothing, we speak that over you today, there's nothing he can do, and we're standing here only because you made a way, you made a way. Would you just begin to sing to him how we love you Jesus how we love you Jesus I know you're for me today I know you're with me today I know you haven't lost sight of me God
release your faith in this moment. You're the God of miracles. You're healing people of COVID-19 right now, God. That's what you do when you step into a room. You allow breath to breathe. You allow the nakamya, the breath of God, to give life to everything that is dead, everything that needs to come back to life. God, that's what you're doing in this moment. You're the God of miracles. that right now your perfect love is casting out fear for you are the God of all power it's your will God that our lives are healed it's your will God that our lives are made whole again it's your will that sickness and disease are eradicated from the nations of this world. There is power in the blood of Jesus, so we declare that in this moment. To every bound mind, every depressed soul, every person that's contemplated suicide, we speak the peace of God over you right now. You are more than this moment, and God has so much greater for you, so don't give up. Don't lose heart. Your God is with you. If he could face the garden, and he could walk through death and sorrow, the shadow of death, you will be made whole in Jesus' name. Jesus is with you today. Sickness can stay any longer. Your perfect love is casting out fear in Jesus' name. For you are the God of all power. It's your will, God. It's your will, God. We just trust you in this moment. Declare that with us. Sickness can stay any longer your perfect love is casting out from the top of my head to the soles of my feet for you are the God of all power healing in Jesus name healing in Jesus name Jehovah Rapha we declare that you're moving now Sickness can stay here. Sickness can stay, can stay here. Longer. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Your perfect, perfect love is a sound mind. In Jesus' name, you are the God. You are the God. Jesus name, you 
voice tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Oh Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus The old name is a lie Not the shadows can God, that you have healed us, you have redeemed us, you have saved us, and you have loved us. We bless you in this moment, God, and when the enemy tries to come in and darkness finds its way around us, we speak the name of Jesus, and that darkness has to flee again and again and again and again because of the power in your name, God. We declare that in this room today. We thank you for that name. We thank you for that blood. We thank you for that healing. We thank you, God, that there are sound minds in this place today. We thank you for that, and we bless you and adore you in the mighty and matchless and precious name of Jesus. Would you shout with us and say amen? Come on right where you are. Just lift up a mighty shout right now. Go ahead, it's okay. Scare your neighbors. Open the windows, open the doors, and shout amen. Just go right ahead and give them a praise because he's worthy, because he's worthy. Hey, City Alive, welcome to Church Online. We are so thankful that each and every one of you are tuning in today. And if this is your first time viewing with us at City Life Church Online, we just wanna welcome you. We pray that the love of Jesus would just invade your home or wherever it is that you may be watching from today. If this is your first time with us, would you do us a favor and click the link right there on your screen titled, First Time Viewer. Let us know your name, where you're watching from, and how we can partner with you in prayer. Again, thank you so much for watching with us today. We're just so honored that you are. We're getting ready to take up our tithes and offerings today, and there are four easy ways for you to be able to do that. You can text to give, you can give on the City Life app. There's a secure link right there on your screen or in the comment section. And you can also mail in your offering if you would feel more comfortable doing that. You can find our address on the City Life app or website. But City Life, I just wanna thank you for staying so faithful in your giving, that your generosity is making a difference in our community, that we as a church have been celebrating hundreds of people giving their life to Christ online because of your giving. City Life, you have a part in that. So as you prepare your tithes and offerings today, I wanna to encourage you with this scripture. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold firmly with a firm grip to the hope that we profess for he who promised is faithful. City Life, I just wanna encourage you today that the promises that God has promised in your life, if you have not yet seen them come to pass, take courage because he is faithful, that the one who has spoken in your life is faithful, that what God has been speaking into your life that he's gonna do with your finances or with your family or with your future, and you think that what is going on right now in our world has just messed all of that up, 
that you can take heart because our God is faithful, that the one who promised it, he is faithful and it will come to pass, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but it will happen. Why? Because the God that we connect with by faith and obedience, that God is the same God that has connected with us. City Life, let's pray today. Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for today. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. God, knowing, Lord, that when you speak something, Father, that it's just not dead words that fall to the ground, but Father, when you speak it, God, it will happen in our lives because God, you are faithful. So Father, I just pray today that as we give by faith and obedience of our tithes and of our offerings, when we connect with you, God, we know that you've already connected with us. So Father, we pray that you would take our tithes and offerings, use it to further your kingdom. God, that hundreds of more lives would come to know your son Jesus because of our faithfulness. God, we love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. City Life, so great to worship with you today. I pray you had an amazing week. I pray that God did some incredible things in your life. You know, things are a little different right now. The church buildings aren't open. The campuses are on lockdown. But the good news is the church is open. The church is still advancing. And I want to thank you. You have made ministry happen all week long because of your giving and your faithfulness and your serving. The church is on the move. Lives are being changed. Thank you for being faithful. You know, I know in our world, things are a little different. My girls are out of school and we've been working from home and our services are coming back to you by the way of media and it, things are just different right now. We even added a dog to our family. Now, it wasn't an easy decision. The girls had a lot of convincing to do. And uh, finally, me and Pastor Casey gave in and they're going to put a picture on the screen to the new steward edition. There's now four girls in our house, so I am totally outnumbered. And we welcome Macy to our house. She's a, a, a eight-pound golden doodle that we welcomed in, and we're doing all the puppy stuff. She's up in the night, chewing on everything, uh, trying to get her out of the house when it's time to go. So our quarantine has got a little stretch this week, and I know maybe yours has too. So wherever you're at, I'm praying that in this season, God's doing something amazing in your life. I want to talk to you for just a few moments about the good shepherd, the good shepherd. You know, the word of God says in John chapter 10, verse 11, this is Jesus talking. This is red letter stuff. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then in verse 14, he said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. You know, I've been thinking about the season we're in. And for many, the season has been just a crisis. And in a few moments, it felt like the breaks of life went on and things changed. Watching the news reports and we're hearing the reports of the economy and all of the things. And, you know, we find that one outlet says one thing and then another news outlet says something different. One doctor says this and another doctor says this. And it feels like there is crisis everywhere. People are losing their job. Unemployment rates are at an all-time high. And it feels like there is just a moment of crisis. And, you know, you can be a crisis Christian. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a crisis Christian. A crisis Christian are those that run to Christ or the church during crisis. But that's really not God's plan and purpose for your life. I don't want to be just a crisis Christian. Now, if you've done that, and we're just glad you found the good news of the gospel, I'm just glad that you're allowing God to work in your life. But the thing is that you've got to make sure when the crisis is over that you still allow the relationship you have to mature and to flourish. I want to be a Christian that navigates through crisis well. One that embraces the moment knowing that in all things God is working. Knowing that God is working even in these unseen times. There's a God that is unmovable. And I'm praying for you and I'm praying that for my family that we navigate through this crisis because we have a knowledge of the word of God. We have the presence of God that is always with us. The good shepherd is in our life. Well, and all through the word of God, we find that the father 
And then Jesus in the New Testament is referred to as the good shepherd, the shepherd leading sheep. Now, now it's, it's a little, um, uh, it makes me wonder why God cho- chose a sheep to identify us. You know, sheep aren't the smartest animals. They're not easily led. They don't have a lot of giftings. They produce wool and, and um, you know, they eat grass and they're stubborn at times. They're not very teachable. Why would God use a sheep as the analogy for his people? We find that there's no guide sheep. They, they don't lead the pack. There's no pack sheep. They don't carry packs of things like a a donkey would or even a goat would. You don't find them carrying things or, you know, packing things. There's no guard sheep. You wouldn't get a sheep to guard your house. You wouldn't have a guard sheep like a guard dog. Why would he use sheep? They're not trainable. They're they're hard to teach. They're hard to to lead. I, I find that because that's a lot like our human nature. And we find all through the word of God that, The father refers to who he is and then in the son as a shepherd, the good shepherd. You know, God began to use the life of a young man in the Old Testament. A young man that was a shepherd. He was given the assignment of tending to his father's sheep. His name was David. And in a moment we find that God thrust him into a season of destiny and promise. And in a moment, we find standing in his father's living room, a prophet told him that he would be the next king of Israel. And they took a horn of oil and released it over David's life. And the Bible said he had the anointing of a king. In one moment, he's a shepherd. And now we find himself positioned to be a king. And David would write so many beautiful songs and psalms. We would find that David was trained in the field and he would understand the principles of guarding, teaching, leading, and training sheep. And we find that David would have alone moments and isolated moments and moments of great revelation. But in Psalm 23, David gives us a beautiful picture of how a shepherd leads and how a sheep follows. And David said this in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. David began to write, and every line, so important, every line, such revelation that I believe David learned while watching and guarding and leading sheep in a field, remaining faithful in times of crisis, when one moment a bear would come and another time a lion would come and David would have to guard, he would have to lead, he would have to chase them down when they would wander off. And even moments have to put some of them down because of those sheep finding themselves in, in, in fallen places, in broken places. And David would learn so many kingdom principles in a field as a shepherd. Cold nights, long winters, hot sun, beating down in hot days. And David would learn these principles. And in Psalm 23, line by line, every word, such revelation. He starts out this way. The Lord is my shepherd. Now watch, David understands what it is to be a shepherd. And this is what he says. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. 
He makes it personal. Just as Jesus taught us to pray. When he said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Jesus said, you're in this personal relationship. And David said, if I'm going to walk, and be led. The Bible says those that are the sons and daughters of God, they are led by the Spirit of God. David knew if he was truly going to be led, he had to be led by the great shepherd. You see, many of us want a shepherd, but we do not want to be sheep. We do not want to follow and train. We don't want to learn and be what God has called us to. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd, it's personal. I'm in a personal relationship. Now, if you're going to be a Christian that navigates through crisis well, you've got to have a personal relationship with Christ. You've got to follow the good shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd. Matter of fact, I'm going to lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep will know my voice. He said, in another, they will not follow. He said, they will know me. I will know them and they will follow me. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. See, now watch. David understands what it is to follow through many different seasons, through the seasons of a shepherd, through the seasons of battle, through the seasons of loss, through the seasons of triumph where they were proclaiming David, the great king of Israel. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Then he says this, I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Why did he say that? Because he never had a need? Because it was never a crisis? Because it was never anything in his life that was needing? No. What he was saying was this. The shepherd that I follow has all that I need. The shepherd that I follow has everything. He's all sufficient. Matter of fact, he said he would supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. His supply is endless. Everything I need is found in him. Everything that I I, I desire according to his will, I find in him. I lack nothing. This shepherd that I follow, he is never, he is never lacking. So therefore, I lack nothing. He is all sufficient. He is always there. He said, I lack nothing. And then he says this, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. You know, I found one of the things that's happening in my life, in our family, we're kind of finding a Sabbath again. You know, we're we're at home, we're eating together, we're having some moments that, that we don't normally always have. And maybe in this season, the good shepherd has you in green pastures. Maybe he's reminding you that you need a Sabbath. Maybe he's reminding you that you need those moments to rest, those moments of refreshment, those moments where he just speaks to your spirit. He said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. The reason a shepherd would make and allow a sheep to lie down in pastures would be for rest. So they would have strength for the journey. And that's what the Holy Spirit does as he leads us. As the good shepherd is leading us, there are moments where he says, it's time to rest. It's time to breathe. It's time to allow me to refresh you. He said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Then he said this, he leads me beside quiet waters. It refers to a place of peace a place of contentment. He said, as the good shepherd leads me, he leads me in places where peace, Jesus told his disciples just before he left, in a challenging moment where they're getting ready to face some of their greatest battles, he said, I'm leaving my peace with you. He said, it's not the same type of peace that the world gives you because they give it and they take it. It's not a tranquil feeling. It's not just a, just a, a sense of happiness. But he said, my peace is going to be instilled in you. The world will not be able to rob it. In your greatest battles, it will be present. Matter of fact, it will go beyond your understanding, your intellect, what you know. I'm going to just instill it. And this is what it said. He leads me beside quiet water. 
waters. There is a peace when he is leading me and I am following him. He said, I want you to understand a place of contentment in me when even though things aren't going the way you thought and even when life hits you and you did not see it coming, there is a contentment because you know there is a peace that you have in Christ. He said, the good shepherd will lead you and he will refresh you and everything you need is found in him and he will allow the peace of the kingdom to rise up and guard you and cover you and he will allow you to understand that there is a place of contentment in him and then I love what he says in the next line he said he restores my soul I am telling you there is something about walking in a season where he leads you in green pastures and he allows you to be content that he begins to restore you he begins to heal you. He begins to bring wholeness in your life because it's in those moments of refreshing that we allow him to work in our life. He said he restores my soul. And I'm believing in this season that you did not see coming. God's restoring something. It's not going to be a season of loss. It's going to be a season of restoration. It's going to be a season where what the enemy thought he was going to dismantle in your life, God's going to put back together and build it up. He said, he restores my soul. And I love what the next line says. He leads me in the right path of righteousness for his name's sight. He said he's guiding me in purpose. David knew what this was all about. He knew what it was to stumble in from a field and encounter a prophet that had a word for his life that said the next season of your life will be the best season of your life. The next season that you're getting ready to encounter is going to lead you to the greater. Get ready, David. You'll not always be in a field, but one day you'll sit on a throne and you'll lead armies and you'll see victories and you'll walk in a place of provision like never before. And David knew what it was. He said, he leads me in right paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He is leading me, not by my name, but his great name. He's leading me in places where he takes that purpose that he has deposited in me. And as he leads me, he brings it out. I'm believing for someone right now in a season that you did not expect, in a season that you did not see coming. God is revealing his purpose in you. I told you last week that isolation many times is where God does his greatest work and brings his greatest revelation. And for some of you, he's leading you in a path. You, you thought that that job you lost was disaster. God said, no, no, I'm setting you up for a better job. Matter of fact, I've heard testimonies already how people have lost jobs, but already in this season, they've got a better job. He's leading me in the right path at the right time. He's putting me in the right place. He's connecting me to the right people. He's allowing me to walk out the kingdom purpose and plan that's right for my life. For his name's sake. And then it says this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. You may know it like this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm in a season that would seem to take me out. I'm in a season that most of the times in my journey, I would have given up because this season seems greater than me. This season seems beyond me. This season seems more than I can bear. But all of a sudden, David rises up because he knows that he is following the good shepherd. And he knows that he lacks nothing. Everything he needs is found in the shepherd. And David knows that there's been seasons of rest and seasons of restoration. And then David rises up and said, even though I'm walking through a valley and it would seem like it is going to destroy me and kill me. I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. And I want you to know right now, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to let fear grip your heart because the good shepherd has a plan. The good shepherd is leading you. The good shepherd is walking with you and he has everything you lead. You lack nothing. Everything you need is found in him. David said, in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. For you are with me. You're right here. You don't have a valley. You need two mountains or two high places. To have a valley, you need two points that are higher than the low place. And what's amazing is this. Psalm 23 
talks about this valley. But what you have to understand when you read, you read in context. Psalm 22 is a prophetic psalm. And it is a prophetic word about Mount Calvary, a mountain where Jesus would pay a price for destiny and eternity. And Psalm 24 is about Mount Zion, the kingdom of God in force and the eternal work of that kingdom. So what you have in chapter 22 is Calvary and the prophecy of Jesus. In 24, what you have is the destiny and the Mount Zion of our future where the kingdom authority is going to be released. And in the middle, you find that you have a valley. But when you know there's a cross in your past and there, there is a kingdom in your future, you can say, in the valley, I will fear no evil because you are in this valley. You are right here with me. David would go on to say, your rod and your staff brings me cover. We're going to talk about this next week. He would go on to say, the goodness of God and the mercy of God, they are with me all the day of my life. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup is overflowing. I'm telling you, if you ever have the revelation that God has anointed your mind to get through this season, it changes everything. David said, you anoint me. Goodness and mercy are with me. And then he rises up with a prophetic declaration. And we're going to talk about these next week. He said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever. Amen. For some of you, you need to get a word in your spirit. And you need to get up up in this season and declare I lack nothing. I am following the good shepherd. Matter of fact, in this season, he's restoring me. He's giving me rest. He's instilled a peace and a confidence and a contentment like I've never had. He's allowed me to understand that in this season, he's working for my good. In this season, He's declaring who I am. Oh, I'm just in a season right now, and this is not the end. I will fear no evil because you are leading me, and you are guiding me, and you are with me, and you are working, and you are fighting. And I know because there's a cross in my path. There's a kingdom authority in my future. And when you understand that, you can say like David, even in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I'm following the good shepherd. Because him I lack nothing. Goodness and mercy are with me. Blessing and favor are mine to have. prophetic word begins to rise up. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 says this. And then I'm believing this for someone. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captive and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. And provide those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness and despair. They will be called the oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. I'm believing this. That God's about to give someone beauty for ashes. He's about to give you a song in the midnight. He's going to slip over you a garment of praise. And you're going to be planted as an oak. And the righteous purpose and plan of God is getting ready to come forth. Because this season did not catch God off guard. I lack nothing. Why? 
Because in this valley, the good shepherd is leading me. I know his voice. I hear his voice. I know his nature. I know his grace. I know his mercy. So I will fear no evil because you are with me. I want you to know right now, he's with you. The good shepherd is leading you. Overwhelming seasons allow us to encounter them with the word of God, the knowledge of God, our relationship with Christ allows us to know that we are covered and we are protected. Psalm 91 says this, verse 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. You may not know this and you may not be able to see him, but there's angels on guard. And that is he's leading you from mountain to valley to the next mountain. He's got you covered. So you lack nothing. You don't have to fear. God just could be using this season to take you into a season of rest, into a place of peace, into a moment of promise. We're going to worship for just a moment, and then we're going to pray together. And we're just going to believe that God, the good shepherd, that has good news and a good plan and a good purpose, good gifts and a great next season it's just going to come in with a breath of his presence a peace that goes beyond understanding knowing that as we're walking through this season here's the key David didn't say I'm staying in this season I'm dying in this season he says as I walk through this season I walk into it and out of it. I will not fear because the good shepherd is in this season and everything I need, he has. Let's just worship for a moment together and then we're going to pray. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. Defender behind me, I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing, my cups overflow. can harm me no I won't fear Ooh, hallelujah I am not is my shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters 
He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm believing that for your life, that you are following the good shepherd. And you're not a crisis Christian. You're a Christian that encounters crisis and comes out stronger, better, more mature, with a testimony, Believing that God is working. So I want to pray for you today. And I'm believing as we pray. And our faith joins together. For those that may be walking and feel like you're lacking. There's a confidence that he has all you need. For those that need rest. And refreshing. Healing and wholeness. He does that today. Father I thank you. The good shepherd. That you only lead us to good places. You only do good things in us. You only work according to your purpose and your plan. So Father, as you lead us, let us be reminded that you have all we need. For those that need refreshing and rest, just breathe on them. For those that need peace in this challenging time, release your peace. For those that feel like the season is overwhelming, let them be reminded that they can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil because you are in this season. You're leading them, you're guiding them, and this season is just leading them to the next mountain of victory, the next mountain of purpose, the next mountain of significance. So Father, let them walk with confidence and anointing knowing that you've got this. Let them be reminded that all they need is in you. Father, and I declare that the next season is a greater season. The now season has already been covered and you're working all things together for our good. We bless your people today in Jesus' name. Amen. City Life, we love you. We bless you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon. Be blessed. Thank you for worshiping with us today here at City Life Church Online. We are so honored to be a part of your life, and we know that God is faithful and has his hand resting over you and your family. Our buildings may be closed right now, but the church is always open. And what a powerful word from our pastor today. I wanna encourage you to take something that God spoke to you just now and find some time to sit down with your family or someone that you know and talk about what God is saying. We believe that God is challenging all of us to lean in during these moments. And when you make him the center of your life, incredible things begin to happen in you and around you. And maybe you haven't done that before. And I don't want to miss this moment that God has given you. If he's speaking to you right now and you are ready to experience freedom from sin and guilt that has held you down in your life, then I believe that Jesus is calling you to commit your life to following him. You don't have to be perfect. In fact, all he wants is for you to learn what he has taught us in his word and put it into practice. And he will be with you every step of the way, teaching and leading you as you grow. So if you're ready to follow Jesus, I want to lead you in a prayer that is going to invite his presence into your life and allow him to teach you what it means to be a child of God. So open your heart to receive his grace and pray this prayer to him. God, I know that I am broken and there are things that are wrong in my heart that I haven't been able to fix. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross and take the weight of this world's sin and darkness so that new life could be born in me through his resurrection. So God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. I turn from my past and all of the sin and shame that has held me down. 
and I ask you to fill me with your spirit and teach me how to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. Amen. And if you just committed your life to following Jesus, congratulations. Please do not leave without connecting with us. We have a quick card for you to fill out and there's a link on your screen that will bring you to it. After you complete it, we wanna send you some resources that are going to help you with taking your next steps from here. What you do from this moment is one of the most important moments of your life. God has an amazing plan for you and your future, and we would love to share with you some material that can help you learn some practical ways to living out the life and calling God has promised for you. And we are praying for you, and we are so excited for the amazing journey you just began. And before you leave, I also wanna make quick mention and thank you from the bottom of our hearts for continuing to faithfully support the work of the kingdom through City Life Church. If you hadn't had a chance to give yet, there's a tab on your screen right now. You know, it's moments like this where your support is needed most. We're continuing to do our part and we're working on plans and ideas of how to support our communities who have been hit the hardest. And we want you to know that your faithful support is going to help us continue to help those who need it most. So thank you again for your willingness to give during these trying times. We know that God is going to bless you and bring increase in your life as you continue in your faithfulness. Well, City Life Church, we love you. We are praying for you and your family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and give you strength. We'll see you soon.